industry is how to design a product efficiently more so in various um, applications uh, with respect to medical fraternity medical applications so on and so forth so how to best design a product is the order of the day so not only that uh, 3d uh, printing allows more design embraced by medical and dental industry for the manufacture of custom production implants and dental aids it's also high time that such an fdp has taken place to emphasize the incredible contribution that 3d printing does in so many areas of life and when i went through the various sessions which is offered by various experts and stalwarts in the industry as well as the institutions various institutions i feel so happy that such an fdp is uh, being organized at this time so that uh, there are a lot of takeaways for both the faculty fraternity and all the participants who are interested in participating in this workshop so i really feel that there will be a lot of uh, key takeaways in terms of 3d printing and its application and i look forward to participating in all the sessions when the will to learn the opportunity to succeed the platform for the know how is uh, that will pay the way for success and i think the time has come now and the platform is now here for lot of interesting key takeaways So I wish all the participants all the very best to actively participate and get the know-how. And uh, my sincere appreciation to the HOD Mechatronics Engineering Department, Dr. Selvan and his team for carrying it through. Wishing you all the very best. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your kind presence and wishes for us. Now it's time to introduce related to healthcare. We are delighted to have you now, ma'am. I'm I'm glad to invite you, ma'am, for this FTP. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon to uh, one and all present. as said uh, my name is dr swarna ganesh at present i am in covid duty even in uh, if it is the uh, research work we are working for the corona crisis so today's topic is all about uh, interconnecting the body mind and soul so the topic looks like very uh, okay what we are going to interconnect or what like it is like very vague but then um, i'm talking about a tool that is like really helpful even in this pandemic situation okay so before starting the session i would just like to give a glimpse of what exactly are we going to talk about which is like which is one of the main factors for most of the diseases any healthcare professional or let it be any professional a general human being faces about okay so in this pandemic i guess all of you all like every one of us underwent certain things during this pandemic like different kind of stresses so um if i can get a glimpse of what exactly uh, you people would uh, like feel like what you want to know about it or uh, how did you manage the stress or what sort of stresses you were facing uh, like it will be good for me to you know take over the session that way and uh, two or three can tell me like what major stresses did you face during this pandemic during this lockdown or whatever can any of you yes ma'am physically we could not get connect to their friends or relatives okay and okay. Uh, as we are in the, our home itself we feel something we are in inside in four walls only and we are not mm. able to see uh, any human faces at least other than our family members Uh, okay. That that we feel uh, like something different. Okay, okay. Uh, Social. Worried friend. about family. Worried, worried about, about family, family and whether uh, this corona will uh, end or not. End or not. And uh, <laughs> okay. going outside also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon. Hello. Yeah. 
yeah good afternoon uh, the yeah. major uh, you know stress that uh, i face particularly is managing this uh, work from home and managing family all together because what used to be a 8 hours exactly what, what used to be a 8 hours work hour suddenly uh, now it is around 16 to 17 hours a day thank you ma'am that's okay <laughs> yeah anybody else i think am i audible ha uh, yes ma'am uh, uh, yeah. it will be more useful if you say suggestions to balance family work and how to relieve from okay. such stresses <laughs> thank you ma'am okay fine <laughs> thank you okay anger management okay social stress there are so many things in the chat box upcoming okay fine yeah. so ma'am, ma'am, if, uh, one more thing even in such yeah. a days where from work from home it is very difficult to uh, satisfy the management that we are doing our work from home at a great extent when they did say you are at home is look like that nothing doing anything it's very difficult to satisfy them that is also another stress stress <laughs> it's okay okay so if you see on an like on the whole like everybody have some or other form of stress so exactly that is what i want to talk about today as well about the stress management okay so many diseases anything anything uh, if you see let it be diabetes let it be heart attack let it be any sort of uh, the high cholesterol blood pressure any sort of diseases which is like commonly seen in the indian population like most of the people they let them belong to any profession including doctors including teachers including layman even the normal labor workers they also face the same sort of diseases but why this is all happening is it not all about the genes this is not all about the food you eat you have a major factor called stress which you go like <laughs> Okay. I'm all going to talk about why the management is very really important and how to do it like easily. How to do it easily? So stress management is not about you have to take an anti-depressing pill or something like that. Stress is all about you have to understand what is stress and that's it. Once you understand what is stress, I think you will find a way. Also, once you know the problem, I think the solution is very easier. Yeah. So let me start with the presentation now. Just a minute. Okay, the screen is visible for everybody. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, I would say yoga is one of the best tools to manage the stress. So before starting the session, I would also uh, want to tell yoga is not about standing upside down. It is not about uh, touching your head to the toe. It is not about the flexibility. It is not about nothing related to the body flexibility at all. Yoga is a form of practice which connects your body which connects your mind which connects your soul together okay so i'm not going to advise do this asans do that uh, practice do this exercises nothing like that but i'm going to teach you the best way to you know uh, keep you away from the stress okay so before starting i would want to say what is stress all about okay so if you have an expectation okay if you have any sort of expectation i would start with an example like most of you are working people yeah the all the members over here the participants over here are all working people okay so the one basic criteria why we all work is to earn a monetary benefit let it be a salary to run your family yeah in this pandemic let it be this lockdown situation let it be the situation where it is partially open where you are not paid full salaries where few of you are not paid salaries at all few also lost the job there are many 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 things okay so this external environment that is the pandemic that is the lockdown that is your management let it be the uh, like the owner the bosses your seniors or whatever all the external pressures okay when they impose such things on you that is such things in sense when they impose something against what you literally want they are imposing a situation where you have to live a life which is uh, like lesser than what you were living before like you have to constrain yourself in the way of spending you have to constrain yourself in the way of living you have to feel contented with what you have it has imposed a drastic stress is it so it is like 
uh, having a life completely different lifestyle which you were living since almost last 25 30 years you were in a different lifestyle and all of a sudden overnight the life is like turned ulta yeah it has become upside down you have to feel contented you have to eat whatever you get you have to go and purchase on that specific day you have to maintain your budgets you have to wait for every single thing to happen so what basically happened is you had some long term goals yeah right from childhood you would have got some ambition you wanted to become an engineer after that you became a professor it is like it is like the goal is evolving okay the goal is evolving right from the childhood you are growing 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 looking forward for a future oriented goal it is always future oriented yeah so you want to see yourself in next 3 years like that next 5 years like that next year your increment should be like that it can be short term goals it can be long term goals but without a goal no human being is driven forward yeah if you don't have a goal of you know having food next time the next meal will you all go for a job if you don't have the feeling of hunger if you are not blessed with that emotion of hunger if you if you don't have a stomach will we all work for yeah we all work for the food we all work for the food we eat yes so that even uh, the smallest goal i can say even we all work for that equal food for the small stomach yeah so it is also goal driven so i say everything in the universe is driven towards a goal looking forward for something yeah so that looking forward for something is called as an expectation yes so when you have an outside stress when you have a pressure that is coming from the outside world the response the body gives is called as the stress okay because you are forced to do something that you really did not expect to do that you really did not want to do yeah you have an expectation but then you are strained to act that way to satisfy the outside world okay so that response it can come physically it can come emotionally it can come mentally it can come at like any form it can be of any form so stress is not something related to depression you holding your head and sitting like feeling depressed feeling anxious all the time stress is not something just related to mind stress can be of different varieties okay and the stress that can be shown outside also can be of different varieties it can express itself in the form of a disease it can express itself in the form of a pain it can express itself in form of like the weakness yeah so can it jar kuda na hello okay so it can express in the way in different ways okay sometimes an emotional drain out sometimes you laugh a lot you feel like having a drink you smoke a lot it can be even the form of the habit you express okay so the stress is an expression it is a response that your body provides for the pressure the outside world is giving you okay so when the stress is there the pressure is always excess and the response you give to that is like too much high okay you always overreact to a stress you always overreact okay so that is what the stress is always a mismatch between what people want to do and what they are capable to do so capable in sense i'm not i'm not meaning about your capability your capacity or your talent nothing like that so capable enough is like is the outside environment allowing you to perform that act yeah as you said you could not meet your relatives you could not go out you couldn't watch your human beings but then the outside world forces you you are capable enough to do it but then you are forced not to do so you lose your capability there that is you are not allowed to use the freedom you had okay so you aspire to do something you are capable enough in doing it but then the outside world is really putting you into a stress level like it is hindering you from performing that act so this mismatch between what you want to do and what is really happening in the world is all about the stress okay it can be related to your work it can be related to your family it can be related to the food you eat it can be related to the traveling you do it can be related to the trip you take around it can be related to anything it can be related to anything so stress is a very very broad term of okay? this so, so you can not say stress is all about the work stress is not all about just the external uh, uh you know work pressure you face stress is not all about that it is from different different varieties and it is a broad spectrum okay so stress is defined as the emotional and physical strain caused by a person's response okay so you respond in a way that is out of your expectation it causes the mental strain and the physical strain to your body so this is what is defined as a stress okay 
so what is a stress it is the medical or biological context uh, in in that context if we say it is like related physically mentally and emotionally which causes tension in your body like externally and also internally in the brain okay so this stress is what it can be as i said it is a broad spectrum so we classify them into two types okay so the stress can be external stress the stress also can be internal stress okay so internal stress is not all about what you think okay so external i will give you an example best example so external stress if you see it can be like your work it can be affecting your psychology work is something external okay you don't work inside your body you go to a place you work there even if you are on a firm you establish your own firm or own business work is something external okay but that work which causes pressure is upon the psychology of you okay it causes tension it causes like uh, will you be able to achieve your targets or whatever it is it causes a psychological tension it causes a psychological tension but why it is external because the factor that causes stress is really there was some network issue i think that is why it is getting interrupted i think i'm audible now yes ma'am yes so uh, yeah. i was talking about the flight and fright mechanism yeah so whenever there is a stress okay stressful situation your body either tie, tries to fight against it or it will win the situation you either run away from there or you stand there and fight for it so one of the examples i can give you is watching a snake okay so you are walking through some area you suddenly get to see a snake and then the first thing what you would do is you'll protect yourself from that yeah you would protect yourself you'll run away from that place you'll run away from that place and after reaching a certain distance where you get assured of yourself that yeah the snake is no more going to harm me like you are away from that situation of facing a snake your body will automatically cool down and then it becomes normal okay so this is called as a flight mechanism where you run away seeing a situation your body tends to defend first that without you know getting affected you get you defend yourself first and then you get into it okay you get to normal phase the fright mechanism is like now you are into a situation you cannot either leave it you cannot neither give a i mean you cannot drop it also your body will feel like you has to fight either it is winning or it is losing your body will tend to fight against it okay so one of the best examples is having a disease like blood pressure okay so when they say initially you will be like okay taking medicines will solve in the initial phases it will be like okay take the medicine keep taking the medicine and then it will be put back into normal so they give you a positive feedback about it and then you fight against it okay you see okay i'm having a medicine i'm not i'm going to be okay okay so you fight against it you win or you lose you don't know but then you decide to fight against it okay so this is what is the flight and fright response you either run away from the situation or you stand there and fight okay but for this reaction to take place your body should know what sort of stress you are facing yeah so a complex structure is involved in that where brain plays a major role and apart from that even your glands the endocrine glands plays a major role okay so what brain does is when you see a snake it immediately responds like you are having a fear it creates an emotion in you okay so the brain is responsible for that fear okay it identifies the factor that causes the stress and it tells you that you are in danger you are in danger okay so this brain will put the signal of the human being into danger what happens is there is a gland called as pituitary gland in your body and this gland lies exactly between your eyebrows okay in center of the forehead okay so this gland will receive the signal of danger will receive the signal of the fear and it starts pumping out stress hormones okay so this will put your kidney into stress that pituitary gland will stimulate the kidneys how by transferring certain hormones called as adrenaline cortisol there are so many other stress hormones which are usually received when you face a stressful situation okay so when this pituitary pushes those hormones kidney will go in for stress okay so most of us know when you are highly frightened you tend to urinate at that place yeah why because why because it is a physiological response the stress hormones puts your kidney into a lot of pressure and then you urinate okay this is a physiological process so your brain detects it it gives the emotion of fear of laughter or whatever it is whatever sort of emotion it transfers to the pituitary gland and from pituitary the hormone runs to your kidneys and then 
the mechanism starts so this is what is like connecting connecting you see a danger through the senses okay you see it through your eyes okay the signal is transmitted through your brain okay and from the brain your body reacts it is like the mind first okay you see through your mind it gets connected to your brain and reacts in your body okay so the soul is frightened so soul mind and the body it is interconnected it is interconnected so what you see the senses always play a major role they receive it they transfer it and your body reacts for it okay so this is what so when this sort of neurological conditions are happening in the body it can alter your health it can alter your emotion it can affect your cognition and everything okay the same snake example okay when you see the snake and run will you see what you are having in your hand or will you find for a vehicle that is nearby which can run faster than you will you be able to think about any alternative the first thing you will do is you will just run away unless you feel it is fine yeah even if you have a lot of options so why does it happen because the fear over there okay the stress over there impairs your cognitive functions like you will not be able to concentrate you will not be able to focus you will not be able to decide you even if you have the ability you will not be able to do or you cannot creatively think okay if you see a snake at certain distance you first have to think will the snake be able to reach you first thing will you think about it no you saw a snake and you are first protecting yourself you will not be able to focus okay if you are running on a road you will not even focus if there is a vehicle coming in front of you you lose your attention okay the same situation you can put into your work life also yeah say for example this lockdown has put the pressure on less in salary sometimes no salary depending upon the number of classes the number of hours you work and all those things so you have a basic plan of okay you have this much amount for a month and then you are running a family with that budget and suddenly you are like you are not having it you are into a lot of pressure of how to handle it at that point your concentration is all about how to make that money what to do for the money so you are not concentrated upon the work you do you will not be attentive on the work you do you cannot decide properly you will not be able to completely deliver what you really want to do the other way is like if you are like if you are into a new job say for example why to take a negative situation you are into a new job okay you are very happy about the job you do you are very happy about all the things they have provided you but then you are not happy about something which is which really you expected let it be the subject you wanted to take let it be the promotion you wanted to get apart from that if you don't have it even though you are happy about all other things you will still be focused upon what you have lost what you don't have okay at that point you will not be able to decide say simply when you want to come to a class you should be able to decide in the 30 minutes time what you can exactly deliver yeah if you are not prepared for it you must be knowing like how many pages you can really cover okay so you have to focus you have to be attentive you have to decide like really if you will be able to cover it or not you decided to cover and then you will think about the ability of how maximum like how to give it and then creatively presenting it okay creatively creatively giving the every effort of it okay so all this functions will be impaired if you have a stressful situation okay all the main functions that are required to perform a task is completely affected okay not only at the emotional level but also health wise why health wise as i said when the brain detects the danger okay when the brain detects the danger i just said it releases some hormones it affects your kidneys okay suddenly if there is an loss of blood in your body the same way an increase in blood in the body your body is put into pressure okay same way if there is a sudden increase in any of the hormones your body is put up into pressure so what the stress hormones usually do they make your heart pump faster okay so instead of this complete contraction of the heart your heart starts contracting like this okay instead of beating 70 times per minute it beats 100 times per minute okay the number of beats increases okay so you you all know the basic function of a heart yeah heart pumps out the blood and then it goes to the different parts of the body okay imagine a heart pumping completely like this giving 80% of the blood out and imagine a heart which is stressed pumping like this and giving only 40% of the blood which comes out okay so when your heart doesn't pump properly the blood that comes out of the heart is also not full okay so all the organs are deprived out of blood at that point okay so when very little blood is coming out your body pushes it okay it pushes it creates a lot of pressure inside resulting in, in increased heart rate increased pulse 
increased blood pressure you tend to sweat okay you tend to feel a lot of heat you get anger and all those things you tend to breathe hard and all these are the physiological responses of the stress okay when you are in a fear you can feel all the situations all the situations you'll feel the palpitation of the heart you'll like pada 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 and rukum you'll sweat a lot you'll not know what to do you'll be nervous your body will really have that height of physiological response so this is what exactly happens this is how the stress exactly affects your health okay this is how it exactly affects your health emotion wise you will become unstable and all the cognition is impaired but then if the emotion is going to continue for a longer time if your heart is going to pump the same way smaller for a longer time obviously your all organs are put into stress okay so now coming to the stress i said about uh, two factors okay that is it can be an external factor it can be an internal factor but the same way the stress also can be of two types okay one is u stress the other one is stress stress so u stress is all about a positive stress okay it is a positive stress getting birth like getting having a newborn in your home becoming a father becoming a mother getting a job promotion getting married say for all the positive things a positive challenge that you are really facing in the life okay at that point it is really happy you are happy becoming a father you are happy becoming a mother you are happy getting a promotion you are happy getting a such a good designation you are happy getting married but then along with that you have certain responsibility that is getting added up but what happens is this positive emotion that you really have the happiness it is going to mask the responsibility in addition you have yeah you always have a responsibility if you are a father if you are a mother you have to earn bit more to keep the baby happy you have to work a lot to keep the baby happy if you have a job promotion it is not just the salary hike you get it is not the just the designation you get it is not just the lifestyle you are going to live but along with that you have the responsibility of performing the job more carefully and you have the decision making power where you have to be more responsible for the coordinates below you yeah and getting married obviously it is happy but then you are entering into a new phase of the life where you have to accompany someone who has a different nature a second nature yeah so you have some responsibility that is added in addition to the positive thing but then this positive stress the happiness that you get due to the stress masks out the challenge okay and it pushes your body it compels your body to perform better okay becoming a father you will not be like i can't work more i cannot earn you will not you will definitely not do that okay it will push your body it will force your body to do that work and get achieved so here is like the fight okay you fight for it you fight for it happily so it is all about positive stress that stress will make you grow it will make you adapt it will help you perform that function it will give you the positive result a new perspective you will be like so creative okay the other one is distress which we all are facing at this point exactly okay but even in this distress there are, are a lot of you stress you get a lot of family time first thing yeah you are happy about yourself you are able to concentrate about yourself you get to learn what is a contented living you get to learn what is really a necessity in life there are so many other things okay but then distress uh in case of losing a job in case of losing a loved one getting divorced the pressure that is caused by the distress will put your capability down okay it is a negative stress even though you you know even if somebody is going to die in your family until your fate is there until your age finishes you have to live you all know that factor but then at that point at that stressful situation you are not capable enough moving forward okay so this stress will mask you from that negative energy so it will be like pulling you down it will not allow you to you know uh, achieve or adapt or grow from the situation it will deplete it will take out the energy out of life okay you will feel distress you will feel anger you will feel rejection so it is the distress is always a form of negative stress okay that will not allow you to grow instead it will destroy okay so this is how we have to segregate the uh, stress we really face it can be positive stress it can be a negative stress but out of every situation what sort of stress are we taking is exactly how your body will respond okay if you are stressful in a negative way your body will also respond in a negative way if you are stressful in a positive way your body will also respond in a positive way so it is you who decides 
what to take out of that stress okay it is you who decides what to take out of the stress okay all right so this is the first point okay next is about the causes of stress as i said the stress can be of multiple factors it can be related to your work it can be related to the ambition you have that you are not able to achieve it can be due to the peer pressure the workers along with you it can be the interpersonal relationship of your family it can be the insecurities you have it can be your health having medicines it can be your kids it can be any financial problem change in environment pollution disturbed family life high cost of living or apart from all this even habit is a stress okay smoking is a stress drinking is a stress anything like any habit that you have is a stress if you don't smoke if you don't drink at that particular time at that particular point your body ends up in a stress obvious so any small habit even a tea coffee drink leave about the negative habit of drinking and smoking even having a tea coffee can put you into a lot of stress if one day you're not going to have it say for example you have the habit of taking tea by morning 9 o'clock before going to work if you're not going to drink that tea you will not be able to work you will be ranting for another 2 hours until you take your tea and even though you are capable enough in delivering a talk without a tea you will be like ranting i have not taken the tea i am not going to perform okay even the smallest habit the smallest of the habit can put you into stress okay so the causes need not be just the death it need not be just the divorce of a person it need not be just living a single life it can be the smallest like as i said having a tea in morning okay so anything can be a stressful factor all right so causes are like multi dimensional and the next one is the physiology of stress as i said an external event comes your brain fights against it or runs away from that and in that point you have adrenaline non adrenaline cortisol all this hormones get released and then your heart rate goes high your breathing goes high the blood flow is diverted to non essential areas you sweat a lot your immune system is totally suppressed in the stress okay when your heart doesn't function properly the blood does not go properly okay blood is the only food your body gets yeah blood carries all the nutrients blood carries oxygen to your cell when the blood itself is not provided how you you can expect your body to be uh like run along the immunity how you can expect your body is defended from the immunity or whatever okay so it is all about the stress once the threat is removed all the happy hormones like acetylcholine comes in and then your body responds back to normal like the same lockdown situation initially it was very tough for everybody once then the situation is released you are facing like bit free once the external factor is removed when the things are getting back to normal it is like fine so this is how the stress usually works when the factor is there you are pushed into that when the factor is removed you automatically get back to normal so it is all about removing that stress okay and then so this is that hypo the axis i said about the brain responds to the pituitary gland and from pituitary the kidney gets affected so what exactly happens is the body's metabolism increases like heart rate your respiration the blood factors you get acidity you develop headache you have an increased blood pressure you have an increased sugar level in your body and inflammation you get pain you get mental exhaustion you feel like like i'm out of energy everything okay so this is all the physiology can cause to your body out of stress okay next one the symptoms can be physical it can be mental if you are into stress you can see symptoms in all the three levels okay it can be either physical symptoms it can be either mental symptoms or it can be behavioral symptoms so physical symptoms can be you can feel pain in your area you will be irritated you will be like raising your voice and talking you will not be able to sleep you will be feeling excessive tiredness you will have a dry mouth you will not be able to breathe properly you will have sweating palms you will have cold hands you might have a stomach upset okay so physically all this all these things can say that you are into some sort of stress okay mentally you will be anxious you will be worried you will be nervous you will be moody you will be depressed you will have suicidal intentions your appetite varies okay your hunger is always related to your mood yeah if you are happy you eat happily if you are angry you avoid food 
sometimes anger induces a lot of hunger okay when you are angry you tend to eat a lot okay you might feel lonely you might have nightmares you will have a deprived concentration you are you might be forgetful and all those things so mentally all these things can happen when you are in stress and behavioral wise when you are mentally affected obviously your behavior is going to be if you don't sleep properly you are not productive the next day okay if you don't sleep properly if you don't have an proper eating habit if you're not hungry if you don't eat properly yeah you'll have a serious appearance you will have increased frustration you will overreact to the situation it might lead into habits of alcohol consumption and smoking and many more okay so once you are mentally affected how you respond to the environment is what is behavioral change okay erinj viller then also is the simple example is the behavioral change okay so health problems with excessive stress what all health conditions can you get with an excessive stress first one is the chd that is coronary artery disease okay so coronary heart disease is all about the stress i was talking about until now okay your heart is going to pump faster and faster and faster rather than the normal level okay so it will lead into your heart disease okay once your heart is pumping like that your brain is not going to receive proper blood supply it might result into stroke okay and then the first symptom of a stress physiologically is the ulcer okay if you have acidity your body is definitely into stress some or other stress okay so this stress what it does is it causes the hcl secretion in stomach okay it will cause hydrochloric acid to secrete more imagine hydrochloric acid is a strong acid yeah if the stomach is very soft in nature if that is going to be in excess it can burn your stomach leading into wounds that is what is ulcers okay so immunity as i said it is going to go down you will not sleep properly you will have headache back ache is one of the biggest examples okay like throughout the day throughout the day except during the time of sleep man adapts only one position that is sitting yeah hardly people walk depending upon the profession yeah so physically you are putting your body into a lot of stress lot of stress for about 10 years minimum continuously and then you develop a back ache okay so that is also an health issue that you are facing and then once you get the back pain you either have to get operated or you get a slip disc you have to take medicine some or other form of intervention that you are going to put that pain down but then you are not really working upon the stress that cause the back pain you are not changing the posture you are not doing the work that you have to do to remove the cause instead you mask the pain you just want to get rid of the pain but then not by changing the lifestyle that led into the back ache okay and then drug and alcohol usage that also can lead into lot of health issues okay your cholesterol might go high with excessive stress and all those things so these all common problems that we have during excessive stress the next one is like for everybody their job is big yeah their stress is big okay for you might be not having food at that point of time is the smallest stress for the other person getting food for the lunch itself is a biggest stress okay so for everybody it is different okay so how to manage it you have so many ways to manage the stress okay physically if you have a proper nutrition your physical stress can be handled okay adequate sleep your mental stress can be handled positive attitude will uh, lead you not to have a lot of expectation okay working against the situation with positive attitude will have a lot of good effects okay and then the physical exercise it can divert your mind from really what you are facing and you concentrate only upon building your body physical exercises helps a lot laughing out loud loud put your anger down relaxing taking your mind off the problems apart from all this you have yoga one of the best tools and how we are going to do it with yoga that is what i'm going to talk for the next 10 minutes okay so yoga is like mind body practice as i said it is not about touching your head to toe it is not about standing upside down it is not about your flexibility it is all about practicing focusing the mind to one particular point and then allowing your body to be comfortable in that situation okay it has exercises it has controlled breathing techniques it has relaxation practices as well so yoga includes every single tool okay not just the stretching not just the body exercise it involves the breathing pattern it involves the relaxation okay so this yoga importance is given in two different things yoga all originated from lord shiva okay so this shiva gave this art of yoga in the form of swara yoga like he sang the uh, sutras and then it was converted by patanjali maharishi and then it is given in the form of yoga sutra so patanjali this saint 
says yoga is restraint of activities of the mind okay if you are able to control your mind everything can be controlled okay restraining your mind from it okay so yoga does the job of restraining okay even in bhagavad gita the holiest book we all follow it is stated yoga is evenness of the mind okay once your mind is stable it is like you have achieved you have mastered something okay yoga is skillfulness in action that means skillfulness in action means anybody can stand upside down yeah but will you be able to comfortably stand at that point will you be able to breathe comfortably standing upside down yoga helps you do that skillfully do that okay anybody can stand upside down for a second but then will you master over it for mastering it you need focus you need attention it is not just your muscle yeah you have to focus on your breathing you have to focus on the position you are in everything matters so that skill development is is all about yoga okay so the stages of yoga how do we get it like how do we achieve it how do we achieve that mind so we follow this eight techniques okay the first one is following the righteousness that is yama restraining yourself from restraining yourself from the things you really don't need next one is niyama niyama is following the truth following the rules and regulations okay you have to follow a certain set of rules and regulations the third one is asanas that is posture body posture doing the exercises the fourth one is pranayama okay how many of you were aware of your breathing in the last 40 minutes of the session how many of you noted how many times did you breathe in and breathe out do you all really know how much did you breathe in and breathe out how many of you were knowing that you did not breathe for almost 3 or 4 seconds were you all aware of it definitely not okay unless we practice the regulation of the breath unless we focus are we breathing in and breathing out we will not be able to have that hold okay so pranayama helps that okay pranayama is the breathing technique that helps you really stay focused okay where avala paniti will not be able to focus on how you are breathing yeah only if you sit and really do that focusing on your inhaling and exhaling you will be able to achieve that regulation okay the next one is pratyahara that is abstractions from the senses okay when you are closing the eyes when you are concentrating upon your breathing really anything external cannot affect you okay when you are really focused upon something nothing can affect you one example is your sleep okay when you are in a deep sleep you will be aware even if it's under call you know if a person near you gets up and goes you know somebody standing near you know when you are into deepest form of sleep it is a form of meditation where your senses are totally abstained from the outside world okay so once you master the breathing technique obviously you will be able to restrain the senses once your senses are closed you are like not seeing anything you are not hearing anything once your senses are closed stress can really not affect you stress cannot enter into your body yeah so this regulation of breathing is one of the biggest technique the biggest gift that is given to keep yourself away from the stress i'm going to tell you how to do that breathing practice at the end of the session okay so before that after abstaining the senses you are really concentrated you go into a self trance level where you are meditating and then you realize what the soul is really having to do okay your body is totally different your soul is totally different okay this body is just a tool that soul takes to perform some actions that is all but then what we do is inverse okay we satisfy everything the body needs we satisfy the hunger we satisfy the taste we satisfy the beauty appearance we satisfy the consciousness okay but then we forget why the soul is purely existing nobody concentrates on why you are here for what you are here and why this body is given to you the body is a tool to perform that action the soul is meant to do okay so this self realization at the at the stage of samadhi really happens when you have the practice of yoga but as a general human being i won't say that we need to attain samadhi and then go as a saint definitely not but at least if you reach the level of pranayama if you are able to control the breath you can control anything that is affecting you okay so these are the stages like how yoga works but for a common human being up to pranayama is like really important you know how to live a life you stick according to the standards yama is done niyama is done asana is not just yoga it can be like any physical activity that is like you are focused on doing it and you are able to do it it is fine and then the pranayama regulating your breath means a lot it is about all focusing okay yes
next one is how this yoga really works as i said breathing is one of the biggest mechanisms behind yoga okay so what happens is there is a place called like there is something called as diaphragm in the body okay you have lungs above you have stomach below okay in between that there is a leaf like structure okay when you breathe in and breathe out your stomach also goes up and down you you can just you can just imagine you are sitting in a chair in the session just constant focus when you breathe in and breathe out what happens your lungs collapses in your abdomen comes out okay when you breathe in but then when you breathe out it happens the opposite there is a movement that is happening in your body which you are really not aware when this breathing in breathing out happens this diaphragm goes up and down okay so if you really breathe with all focusing this diaphragm has some nerve called as vagus nerve okay if that nerve is stimulated it helps your stress level fall okay by targeting the medulla of your brain okay so once this work vagus nerve is stimulated what happens is the brain receives the response that your body is stable the body is stable instead of stress the vagus nerve gives the signals of your body is stable so it will put down your breathing it will put down your heart rate it will lower your blood pressure it will put your digestive activity into normal whereas in the stressful situation all this four were ulta you were breathing a lot you had excessive pulse you had a high bp you had a lot of acidity okay so this stimulating of vagus nerve is what is all essential that breathing can easily do okay doing a pranayama can easily do so the same axis what i said in the beginning through emotions so as since when you do as i said physical activity when you do what it can do it can give all sort of movements to the muscles in your body it can give you the complete range of movements the joints can have a better living your posture will improve your energy level rises and when you are doing certain asanas your heart function and your lung function is affected like in a positive way so when you do certain asanas you have to breathe out and go to that pose when you are doing something you have to breathe in and come so that way you are focused and your efficiency increases your immunity increases your endocrine functions becomes okay and your weight is normalized the body weight can be maintained your digestion improves okay and how the pranayama works it puts your depression anxiety down it allows you to focus it improves the concentration it improves the memory it improves the pulse rate the respiratory rate the blood pressure and one main thing is all about the alpha waves your brain has okay brain emits three different waves one is alpha beta and theta okay so commonly a normal individual in a living phase emits beta waves okay and when you sleep it is delta okay the gamma and delta and then the alpha waves can only happen only when your breathing is normal and your brain is like i am fine i am stable so this alpha waves will allow you to be in a trance state like very stable nothing can affect you okay so only a breathing can help can help in bringing this alpha waves you can also search for there are a lot of research papers stating the same okay when you practice pranayama it is the only form of generating the alpha waves in your brain that is the only best way to generate the alpha waves okay and then you are strong enough resilience your breath holding time your lung capacity improves when you breathe in voluntarily breathe out voluntarily you are going to focus on taking in more air and giving out more air so the lung is also going to expand and come in like in a longer phase so that can put the capacity of the lungs more okay and then uh, the next one is meditation so when you meditate you like as i said when you are aware of the soul why the what is the purpose of the soul you will have self acceptance you will be aware of what you are doing you will actually realize what it is the mood the memory the learning skills attention everything improves you will be able to like when you are into your own happiness you can adjust socially anywhere okay let, let it be any situation it cannot affect you you can socially adapt everywhere okay subjective well being improves okay so biochemically like uh, if at all you are not having stress you can put your glucose levels down you can put your sodium levels down you can put your uh, your i mean this like okay ha huh, your cholesterol levels are going to decrease and all those things okay if you are not stressed your sugar level is going to be uh, low yeah fine so i think now everybody are clear like what a stress can really do to you yes okay 
so uh, are you all ready to uh, go for a like session on how to do the breathing technique yes ma'am yes are you all there in the session yes madam yes. yeah okay yes. so you have any doubts related to your presentation you can please go ahead i can clear it and you can start the session of breathing do you want to ask anything regarding the presentations uh, good afternoon ma'am good afternoon uh, really dear very good uh, session ma'am thanks for uh, sharing uh, uh, such a valuable content to us ma'am thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you okay so i think we can go with the yeah yeah ma'am actually i have a doubt um, so yes. what is the difference between the doing a exercise in the gym or and uh, what is yoga compared with the yoga yeah i'll say you so when you do gym okay you really focus upon the muscle okay you really focus upon developing the muscle developing that particular part or reducing the weight in that part but in yoga it is not all about you don't focus on your breathing at all when you do a gym exercise your breathing is always excessive in nature you always breathe harder but in yoga it is not at all it is like slow breathing you never breathe harder okay your breathing is regulated voluntarily or involuntarily and your mind stays focused okay but in exercise it is a form of diversion you are diverting your mind you are actually forcing your body to do it okay this is the main difference when you do an exercise you might like doing an exercise but it is all about diverting yourself from something else but in yoga it is not it happens involuntarily involuntarily your uh, brain goes in for the trance state actually it is like Thank ease you. yeah okay so shall we move in for the breathing technique yes ma'am yeah okay so just give me a minute uh, i'm just fixing my position okay so you all can sit in a chair comfortably where you can keep your spine erect okay spine and neck should be erect you can either sit down in your place you can be on your cot you can be on your chair or wherever you are but then just see to it that your uh, uh, spine is kept erect you don't lean forward you should not lean backward you shouldn't be hunching okay you should not be hunching you are able to see me right okay so you have to keep your spine erect okay keep your eyes closed just go with my instructions okay i am going to teach you one of the best pranayama techniques which will put your first thing your anger down okay second thing it will able it will allow you to focus on that particular moment third thing it will keep your body cool okay it will be like you are out of something it will allow you to focus on something it is very good for people who have blood pressure it is very good for people who want to lower their sugar levels okay this is the common thing like bp and diabetes is the most common thing like every one of us face right so this technique can help you put down all this yeah and you can give a give a try like if you want to really test what your breathing can do to your body i'll give an example okay so i'll give you an example of uh, how uh, your emotions play a role with your breathing okay when you are angry do you breathe very slow or perumu chudvingla when you are angry it is like you are like breathing faster ko apdi mookla ko varudun solvanga it is all about the breathing yeah so it is all about the breathing when you are happy you tend to exhale longer your emotions always has a role to be played with your breathing okay mood epdi iruko adu poruthu dhan breathing i can say the inverse if you breathe normally you can control the mood right or wrong when you have an emotion and you breathe like that if you are able to control that breath physically your mood also will become all right right or wrong it is always inverse right it is always inverse so this is the technique i'm going to really talk about okay so just hold close the right nostril okay right nostril with one finger and those who want to really check if you have a fitbit or something where you can see the pulse rate you want to check the pulse rate you want to check the bp if you have an instrument like that or if you have a phone you can start before starting the session 
please note what is your pulse rate what is your respiratory rate what is your bp okay it can be a live session you can see it across and once you finish the breathing look at what is the pulse rate what is the bp and through the breathing when you are breathing look at how it changes okay how it changes your breathing can really control it okay so close the right nostril completely and i want all of you all to inhale and exhale only through the left okay inhale exhale only through the left close the right completely inhale deep exhale through deep okay exhale longer okay you can keep a ratio of 4 is to 8 seconds okay 4 seconds count 1 2 3 4 inhale for 4 seconds count 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 exhale until 8 finishes yeah inhale exhale only through the left close your eyes just focus on the breathing and i'll tell you as you are focused you will be able to sense the temperature of the air you breathe in the air gets cooler and cooler when you go inside the left nostril when you really breathe inside the left nostril if you are really focused you can feel the temperature of the air and you can feel the exhalation phase or the amount of air you are able to take in is really longer okay so i want you all to try you can keep your videos on so that i can wish see if people like really like who are doing i mean i can see like what you are doing yeah then if you can keep your videos on please start the practice just go for 11 times okay just breathe in and breathe out longer for 11 times close your eyes stay focused only on the breathing keep inhaling control your emotions do not think about anything just don't think about as you inhale take on positive affirmations you are doing good you are a well being you have a good soul just as you inhale keep giving positive affirmations as you exhale put out what you really don't want to see in you just put out you are not exhausted you are not the one who are said to be incapable put out all the negative things as you breathe in take out positivity as you breathe out put out negativity just focus stay focused inhale longer keep inhaling longer those who have done you can just share your experience just finish 11 rounds of practice focus on your breathing those are finished can let me know if you did any of you check your pulse did any of you see like how it felt but uh, feeling fresh madam or uh, feeling refreshed it is just 11 breathing not even a minute yeah you just took hardly 2 minutes to put yourself into track yeah okay so this is I one of it was uh, very yeah yeah go I ahead thank you very much ma'am after okay. uh, doing this exercise okay i feel uh, really very fresh you know very yeah. concentrative mode when i feel really bored or else when i get any stress if i can do this uh, yes. i know i'll be very much happy Able i can do i can be ready for uh, other things to ha happen yes yes okay so this is all uh, i want you all to uh, really know we, yes should we should we repeat this for the uh, right nostril no see i'll tell you i'm coming to that i'm coming to that actually so this is one of the techniques you all can use when you are really stressed about something okay when you are like in a negative stress <coughs> like when it is putting your energy low okay when you are physically tired when you are not able to focus on something you can do this when you have a fever where you can do this and all those things okay but right nostril when you can do is you don't have a factor outside okay but then you really feel like you are low your mind is not okay you are not able to work like you are exhausted when you do the right nostril when you do the reverse of it 
the other part of the brain gets activated and you and it puts you into hyperactive state okay when you feel like really weak you have to do the right nostril breathing when you feel like really stressed you have to do the left nostril breathing so it is like opposite connected okay when you do the right hand writing your left brain activates when you are doing left hand writing your right brain activates the same thing is with your breathing also okay so when you are low you have to do the right nostril when you are stressed on your regular routine to make you stabilized you can do the left nostril if you want to gain focus if you really want a solution for the problem you are facing at that point or if you want to take yourself out of that problem then also this left nostril breathing will help a lot okay and i want every one of you to practice this like it hardly takes 2 minutes of your time like morning afternoon before going to bed whenever you want you can do it okay you don't have to sit in a green place early in the morning in front of the sun nothing like that you can do it wherever you are all right yes you have anything else to ask ma'am we should do it for 11 times as you yeah that is what i'm telling see if you if you want to keep yourself stable okay if you really want to keep yourself stable every day you can do it as a practice like morning 5 minutes during the sunset sunrise and sunset morning 5 minutes evening 5 minutes is like it is like giving boost to your energy in the morning and then the evening okay it is like giving energy if you want to really make it stable you can do it like 5 minutes every day in the morning and in the evening and apart from that whenever you are stressed whenever you feel you are drained out you can really do it anytime anywhere Yeah. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Dear participants, do you have any questions? So, uh, I think this is the last thing I can tell you. When emotions can rule your breathing, if you control the breathing, you can rule the emotions. Yeah. You can really try it. I just just one session, you will feel the difference. I can re you can all really focus. And who has? I think most of the faculties might be many of you would be having blood pressure, like a common scenario. You can try it for fifteen days. Okay. Just try it for fifteen days in the morning time, five to ten minutes in the morning, five to ten minutes in the evening. Just do the left nostril breathing. I am promising your blood pressure levels are going down. It will go down. It will definitely go down. Yeah. So control the breath. control your emotions you can mind make your mind stable there was one question in the chat box what you are saying theoretically is like all good but then practically it is difficult okay for doing that practically i am giving you this practice okay to avoid your mind to enter that stress level okay your breathing can control that emotional reactivity that is why i have given you this technique yeah so do this you can really control your emotions yeah so thank you all I think yeah, it's done. Yes. Thank you thank so you. much. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for giving an excellent presentation, ma'am. It was really good. We really understand what is stress, the different forms of stress, and you also said ways to improve our efficiency as well as our immunity in our body. Thank you so much. Yes. On behalf of the management and department of mechatronics engineering, I extend my very heartfelt thanks to the to for a gracious presence. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Participants, the next session starts at two forty, two thirty p.m. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So Thank much. you so much. Yeah.